Matt Damon. Ever heard of him? Yeah, of course you have. He's one of the biggest movie stars in the world with some hugely successful titles under his belt. He's been the star of so many blockbusters over the years, and he's played some truly epic roles. Matt Damon. What's interesting about a lot of his roles, though, is that they're actually pretty similar. Sure, you could just chalk that up by saying that he's one of those actors who has a tendency to just play themselves, like how Denzel Washington is usually playing a very Denzel Washington-y type of role. Let's <laughs> go. But actually, there's a lot more to it than that. A lot of these roles aren't just similar, they're actually the same person. Now, this is just a theory, but it would make sense if Matt Damon's characters in Good Will Hunting, The Martian, Interstellar, and all the Bourne movies was actually the same person. You don't have the faintest idea what you're talking about. It might sound silly, but the facts actually stack up pretty well, and the timeline of events make perfect sense. Let's start with Good Will Hunting, a movie loosely based on Matty Boy's upbringing in South Boston. He plays the role of, well, Will Hunting, a 20-year-old secret genius working as a janitor at the renowned Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or you probably know it as MIT. He accidentally lets his intelligence show when he solves a complex math problem that was left on the board of a classroom. After an encounter with a police officer that, you know, led to some criminal issues, Will agrees to work with a therapist. That relationship evolves and grows as Will begins to open up and understand his gift. He begins reevaluating his relationships with his best friend, his girlfriend, and himself, facing the extremely difficult task of dealing with his past and also learning how to think about his future. The film not only starred Matt Damon, but was also co written by him and turned out to be his first major breakthrough in Hollywood. What's fascinating about the movie, though, is how it ends. It's, it's sort of open-ended, with enough of a conclusion that audiences don't feel let down, but also vague enough that there's really no telling exactly what happens to our man Will Hunting. The movie is about this guy's inner struggle between regular life as a regular Boston dude, contrasting with the high expectations of being a real legit genius. Will he or won't he commit to reaching his full potential? It all culminates with Will just disappearing. We're left to assume that he took a prominent job offer, but there's no telling what actually happens to the guy. Well, we've got a guess. Think about it. A gifted and brilliant young man with real legit street smarts? That sounds like an ideal candidate to be recruited by the CIA. How do you like them apples? <laughs> Being such a ridiculously talented individual, he obviously moves up the ranks pretty quickly, and he gets recruited by an ultra-secret program and is given a new alias to go by, Jason Bourne. Flash forward through several years of intense spying and espionage, and it was time for a change. After all, you can only do that stuff for so long, you know? There's a reason they keep cycling through different James Bonds. The high-speed chases and intense physical combat can be pretty demanding on a person, so it would make sense that after some time as Jason Bourne, he needed to switch things up and get into a different field. Fair enough. Perhaps something a bit calmer and, uh, I don't know, safer, yet where he can still use that beautiful brain of his and take advantage of his brilliance. Well, how about science? Now tired with math, Jason Bourne slash Will Hunting goes back to school once again, this time choosing to focus on botany. Of course, being the super genius that he is, he excelled in this field too and quickly became an expert. I don't know. So much so that in the not so distant future, he made it onto one of the first missions to Mars. This brings us to The Martian. Now sure, things go pretty poorly on that mission. However, he's able to stay remarkably cool under pressure because of his previous work experience as, you know, a cutthroat super spy. After he comes back from his mission to Mars, it's safe to say that he'd be considered, quote, the best of us, you know? After all, he'd been a math genius, a super spy, and now he survived a mission to Mars. Coincidentally, his character in Interstellar is described as, quote, the best of us. NASA decides that, because he's a botanist and the survivor of such a wild space experience, he'd be best qualified for a search mission to a far-out planet now that ours was becoming less and less habitable. Now look, it's easy to just say, oh, it's two space-oriented movies that feature Matt Damon as an astronaut and call it a day, but that would be a pretty lazy theory. And this is Screen Rant, where we come up with the very best theories, so there's actually a heck of a lot more parallels between these two films and these two characters. It's actually character evolution at its finest. 
While Mark Watney from The Martian was a likable protagonist kind of a role, the later version, Dr. Mann from Interstellar, was definitely more of a villain. He finally fell victim to the struggles of life and let it get the better of him. After a life of overcoming obstacles and defying the odds, he finally met his match and it led to his eventual demise. It's a tragic character arc, in a way, watching a man go from promising genius to scared in primal survival mode. The role of Dr. Man in Interstellar has an air of mystery around him and his reputation clearly precedes him, as characters often discuss what an important man he is but they never really explain why or how he gained such respect. All that we know is that he's one of only 12 individuals to successfully travel through a wormhole. When he's finally shown on screen near the end of the movie, it's treated as though it's this big, huge reveal. While audiences probably assume this is because of the A-list actor Matt Damon making a cameo appearance in the movie, it's actually because Dr. Mann is the climactic conclusion to the Mark Watney story arc that started way before. Before we continue on with this theory, I just want to remind you to subscribe to Screen Rant and turn on those notifications. If you're on mobile, just go into your YouTube settings and turn on mobile notifications. And then you're all set. Your life will literally improve drastically after that. Now back to Matt Damon. If you pay attention towards the end of The Martian, we see Mark Watney at the NASA campus. He acknowledges a small sprout which looks eerily similar to the potato sprout seen earlier in the film on Mars. It's suggesting that he brought back some of his Martian potatoes and continued cultivating them. Years later in Interstellar, a mysterious blight has begun infecting crops and threatening life on Earth, making it near uninhabitable. As a result, NASA is forced underground because space exploration is seen as an unnecessary expense. If it is, in fact, Mark Watney's Martian potatoes that caused the blight that's now threatening life on Earth, it would make total sense why NASA and Watney go underground. So, as a result, this totally explains why Mark Watney ventures out into space once again. You'd have to figure that after such a traumatic experience like what he went through on Mars, he'd never in a million years come remotely close to considering another dangerous space mission. And what does that do to him man, psychologically? But, on the other hand, the one thing that would get him back on the saddle, so to speak, would be if he was partially responsible for the whole, uh, you know, looming doom thing. Rather than just another mission, it's actually a case of Watney trying to redeem himself and save humanity from the outcome that he accidentally set in motion. Then the worst case scenario happens to him. He once again finds himself alone and stuck on an inhospitable planet devoid of any life. Bummer. That's enough to cause literally anyone to have a psychological breakdown, even the most brilliant of minds. He completely loses his optimism, and his survival instincts kick in during Interstellar as he chooses to prioritize saving his own life over saving humanity. The timeline even matches up well. Let's do the math. In 2032, Cooper is born, the character that would eventually become the main character of Interstellar, played by Matthew McConaughey. Three years later, in 2035, Mark Watney ventures into space at the age of 41. In 2037, two years after that, he survives the Mars ordeal and returns to Earth, unaware that he's now infecting the planet with blight. Based on the horrific events that he had to overcome, NASA begins developing the technology for cryogenic sleep so that no astronauts would have to deal with that kind of nonsense ever again. By 2040, Watney's name is now synonymous with Blight, so he changes it to Man in an attempt to protect his identity so that he can keep working with NASA. After all, he's a genius with a ton of knowledge to offer, so they still want him around, they just need to hide the fact that it's Mark Watney, the guy responsible for uh, this, this little issue they're dealing with. I'm sorry, who are you? Years go by, and in 2055, Watney is offered the opportunity to redeem himself and save the world by participating in the Lazarus mission from Interstellar. In 2057, the Lazarus mission launches, with Cooper now a part of the picture. Things don't go so well, though, and Watney, or now man, once again finds himself stranded on a distant planet. Yeah? The difference between the first time and the second time, though, is that the first time this happens on Mars, he knew that the whole world was working to get him back and trying to save him. This time around, having no communication with Earth and losing all hope that anyone was ever coming for him, he acts on sheer survival instincts and sends out word that his planet was inhabitable. It was an act of pure demoralization. He felt as though he had no other option and chose to save his own life the only way that he knew how. 
So Cooper ventures out to go check out Man's awesome new planet, where he arrives in 2092. Because Man had spent so long in cryosleep, he actually doesn't age all that much. When he's finally woken up, he's actually only 52 years old. And voila, the whole thing is tied up with a nice little bow. You get the picture? Yeah, I got the picture. The Boston Southey Will Hunting becomes Super Agent Jason Bourne, who gets into some cool space travel as Mark Watney, but then messes up and has to change his name to Dr. Man. That's a pretty interesting life if you ask me. What do you think? Does this theory make sense? Is there anything that you would change about it or anything that debunks it? Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Before you go, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up, and if you haven't already, make sure that you're subscribed to Screen Rant to stay up to date on all of our latest releases. Until next time, bye!